<laughs> I might even buy myself another RS3. Welcome back guys to another video and what I've got for you today is as you can see behind me is this stunning RS3 saloon. Now it's finished off in the most popular Nardo grey colour which I know a lot of people actually opted for this colour. It wasn't an option if I remember correctly but it's a stunning colour honestly. I mean just look at this thing. It's, it's such an awesome car. Such an awesome car. And it's got, if, apart from the actual ceramic brakes, it's actually got all the options, I believe, as well. It's actually a good car to look at and to drive. It's, it's awesome. It's, it's an RS3. I mean, who, who doesn't want... It, RS3s drive fantastic. They drive absolutely great. The four-wheel drive system is amazing on them, the power delivery. And with it being a facelift car, this has got 400 horsepower, 396 odd horsepower, and... As you can see, it's just a stunner. It is a stunning, stunning car. So what I'll do is I'll go for a little walk around the car with you just to show you the spec on it and what things this had done. And then we'll go for a drive. And oh, I must admit, this thing drives very, very good. I mean, I've driven it for a few 15, 20 minutes so far and it drives awesome. And it's got the options that you need as well. So we'll go for a little walk around the car and then we'll go for a little drive to just check this out. So here we are this stunning RS3 saloon in Nardo Grey. And as you can see, it's fit, fitted with the Audi Sport 19 inch optional wheels as well. And um, when they sit at standard sort of ride height, I don't think they look overly great, but with this one being lowered, I think it suits the uh, car quite well. It fills the arches very nicely, very, very nicely. So, oh yeah, and coincidentally today, we're outside a VW dealership. So as you can see, the DRLs, the headlights on these different with the different DRLs, they've got LED, it's got the matrix headlights, which are good, I'm assuming. I'm not sure what they actually do, what they don't do, but yeah, they're very, very, they look good. And it's got the sweeping rear indicators. And the whole facelift front end looks so much better. It's got all the, the lights as different compared to the pre-facelift. It's just a lot sharper. I, think, I believe the front end is on these face, uh, facelift cars. And again, like I said, with the actual uh, car being fitted with these 19 inch uh, Audi Sport wheels, it just looks stunning. It actually does look very, very stunning. So again, they've got the bumper design is slightly different on the, pre, on the facelift cars to the pre-facelift. Um, it's got the black exhaust, which is a bit dirty at the moment. And so is the whole car. So I apologize for that. Didn't get a chance to actually clean it up. There's the, no way actually open to actually get it cleaned up from so uh, so yeah so and the diffuser on these that's a standard diffuser and i mean just look at that that just looks uh, just looks stunning that does add to the whole effect of you know the the rear end of the car and it's also got this aftermarket um lip spoiler which i believe looks good the standard ones i believe they come with is uh, they're very very small this thing is slightly larger but it looks good it's not over the top and yes, just in case you forget what car you're driving, the RS3, epic car, such an amazing car. And again, from this side, it's, it's got that nice ride height to it. Very, very nice ride height to it. And again, apologies, it is a bit dirty, but um, I would just have to, I just have to make do what, what I actually had. It's too cold to actually get the hose pipe out and wash it down myself. So yeah, it's also actually, I've noticed it's got carbon fiber uh, mirrors, mirror covers, which do actually look good when you notice them. I didn't actually spot them up until now, but uh, yeah, they do actually look quite nice now that I'm actually staring at them. Uh, and the whole RS3, the, RS, the whole Audi RS range is come with these big honeycomb grill. 
and when you see one coming up behind you with that grill, you know, it does, it's an intimidating grill to be fair. It's very, very big. You know you've got an RS behind you, whether it's a four, three, five, six, uh, seven, you know you've got an RS behind you and they do look, they do, they do, they are intimidating, honestly. And the pan roof again, the pan roof is a very good feature, a very, very good feature. It does liven up the whole of the cockpit and as you can see, super sport seats. Such a, such a good car this is. So inside, it's got, with it being a facelift, it's got the, the facelift steering wheel, which has got this little hole here. Uh, and as you've probably spotted already, the best feature of this thing is that virtual cockpit. Now, you can either have it like this, so you've got the full maps in front of you, or you can have it just so you've got, you know, your G meter on the side, map on the left and your speedometer in the middle with the rev counter or you can I'm sure you could change them to different so you can show your power figures here as well a power and torque percentage that you're using um, but yeah I'm not going to mess about too much with that because like I said it's uh, it's not my car so I don't want to change the settings on it and again with it being having the RS design pack it's got the red outline on this uh, seat seat belts the red stitching on the actual seats as well i think it's catalonia red super sport seats are a must option they look so much better than the standard uh, audi seats the standard seats they almost you, you get them in this normal ranges as well they look very similar to them and they just have a um, s line embossed on the normal ones or rs or s3 or whatever it is whatever car you're comparing them to but the rs3 ones have RS written on them and they just look the same but with the super sport seats I must admit they, they're fantastic the only thing about the facelift super sport seats is they don't have RS3 embossed on them it's just RS whereas the pre-facelift had RS3 written here so I'm not sure why Audi have actually done that but it is what it is and it's still a it doesn't you know detract from an awesome sort of uh, optional seat and again it's got the red stitching on the steering wheel red stitching on the gator and again facelift car so it's got the alcantara on the gear knob as opposed to leather flat bottom steering wheel alcantara on the sides leather top and bottom these red uh, vent circle things are again part of the rs design pack and as mentioned this is also fitted with uh, the pan roof epic feature honestly such a such a good thing reverse camera as you can probably see they're still running on there even though I'm not in reverse um, it's also got Magride RS uh, sports exhaust and when you're driving an RS3 you want a sports exhaust you want it to sound loud the pre facelift cars do sound louder because they have these have a bit more of a bit, bit more of a restriction I think it was this is pre OPF so you're not going to find it with the OPF filters, the OPF filters on the newer ones are really quiet. They've really toned down the exhaust. So what people do is you've got the whole system, uh, take the OPF filter out and then start mapping. And onto mapping, these things here, actually, what we'll do is I'll show you the engine block first. The engine bay on this thing, the engine look a lot better than the pre-facelift cars. Oh, sorry. The pre-facelift cars look a lot better than these, in my opinion, purely because these have this whole plastic cover whereas the pre-facelift cars actually had a red rocker cover that was on this, on show so and i know you could buy these with the carbon fiber covers but for the sake of a few a couple of thousand pounds whatever they are 1500 pounds it's it's not something that you're really going to be looking at anyway when you're driving the car it is an rs3 still and it still drives and performs as one should so but and the the with it, the facelift cars have an aluminium block and I believe they're built with magnesium, aluminium and so and so, but they are about 26 kilos lighter. And this is probably why the pre-facelift cars, they've got a heavier front end so they dart around a bit on the road. Whereas the pre-facelift, uh, so the facelift doesn't do that because it's a lighter block, weight distribution's a little bit better. And these are a lot more tunable. Stage two on a stage on a facelift is over 500 horsepower. Stage two on a pre-facelift 2015-16 car is 450 at the most. So if you're looking for tuning sort of potential, get yourself a facelift RS3. 
if you're looking for something that's a bit louder in standard form without having to play about with it, get yourself a preface lift. Power, um, money wise, there's you know five, six grand difference in them. You can have a preface lift for as little as 25, 26 grand and a basic sort of one. Something with a bit more options like this has got, but on a preface lift, you're looking at over 30k. But again, these are a lot more than that because it's a facelift and it's a saloon. And Nardo Greys generally just tend to have a bit of a premium. Uh, so do the other, I can't remember, there's a couple of rare colours. There's, I think they're light, like a greeny sort of colour, but yeah, it is what it is. And it's also actually got a keyless entry, which I know some people actually opted to have that off on their cars purely because of these cars being quite hot cars. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, as you can see, it's, it's, just a, it's just a stunning, stunning car. There's, there's really nothing bad to say about these things. They are such an amazing car. So what we'll do is we'll go for a drive and just to give you guys a feel of what this thing actually drives. So, so here we are in this RS3 saloon and it, honestly this thing is, as far as grin factors go, this is also very high in my opinion. I know a lot of people say these fast four wheel drive Audis are a bit dull, but no, the, this RS3 saloon is such an amazing car. And I mean, we're driving it at the moment in, in comfort mode. And it's, it, it's just a very, very well built car. They're very refined. There's, you know, there's, there's not a lot of, uh, creaks and knocks and bangs and stuff bear in mind this car is lowered a little bit and i have the pan roof open at the moment so you might have a bit of wind noise but honestly these things are very very well built it's such an amazing car this thing is and the best feature about it from a driving point of view is the virtual cockpit is awesome the virtual cockpit is such an awesome feature on the audi rs3s and across the whole audi range and I must admit, it's uh, once you've had it, it feels odd not having it. So if you're looking for an Audi, especially one of these performance models, I highly recommend look for something that's got the virtual cockpit because it's such an amazing feature. Honestly, such a good feature. So, I mean, the whole drive of this car, it drives absolutely beautiful. There's, that's one way to put this car. It, the car is actually absolutely stunning and to, to drive on it is is beautiful it's perfectly planted with audi's, audi's legendary quattro four-wheel drive system this thing is you quite quite literally put your foot down and it goes i know the audi rs3 is compared to the bmw m2 now with the m2 it is a livelier car yes but if you don't know what you're doing with one of them you will also end up in one of these fields or in one of these ditches around here as well. So they are, whereas these, the four wheel drive system is perfect. Like I said, you just plant your foot and it pulls and it pulls very well. Audi have been known for their legendary four wheel drive system. And honestly, these newer Audis with the Haldex controllers and there's such a, such a grippy car. I think this one's running Michelin Pilot 4S's and they do grip. They, they grip very, very well. Honestly, I, I, this, the, the drive on this is actually very good. The cockpit, steering wheel, perfect size. It's the facelift car, so it's got the, uh, well, you didn't get the saloon in a pre-facelift. So it's got the aftermarket, the, um, the newer steering wheel. So it's a slightly sl slimmer steering wheel. Airbag slightly looks different and it's got this little hole at the bottom. It's a flat bottom steering wheel, which is across the board on all the Audi RS ranges um, and it's also obviously got the multi-function buttons now these flappy paddle uh, the, the gear shifters on the pre-facelift they were a bit plasticky but with this again being a facelift car they've got like an aluminium uh, look to them and I, I'm not sure if they're plastic just coated but it, they do feel a lot better than the pre-facelift and it's just generally, I mean, this car comes with the RS design pack. Um, so it's got the red stitch, red actual outline on the seat belt. The vents uh, have got the red circle thing on them. 
the red stitching, I think it's Catalonia red stitching on the, the seats. It's also got the Super Sport seats, which is a must have option, I must, I must say. The Super Sport seats, when you're sitting on them, obviously you can't tell the difference between these or the standard seats. But from a resale point of view, they are a must. I, I, unless obviously you're getting something dirt cheap, then yeah, you can turn, you, turn a blind eye to it, but they are a must. And like I said, we're cruising around, along now in da comfort mode, seventh gear. And it's just a very refined, very refined car. It's got that Audi build quality, that Audi feel to it. And it's not a bad thing that it is a very, very good thing. Very good thing. This car, it's got, like I said, it's got a lot of the options. The panoramic sunroof on these cars is an awesome feature. Again, I know the pre-facelift cars did suffer from a few issues with the pan roofs where they started uh, seizing up, I think not opening, but this car actually, but on this car, it's actually, you know, the, it's, it's a must have feature, I've got to say. It lightens up the whole cockpit. The whole thing is just lit up. You know, it's, it's a lot brighter. It's a lot livelier in here, just purely because of that panoramic roof. And looking at the car from the outside as well, it's, it looks a lot better, especially with the pan roof open. Because the pan roof tilts back, it's a fully operational roof, so it tilts back halfway across the roof and uh, it looks good from the outside. I'll put a clip up here of it if you've not actually seen one before, which I'm sure you probably have, but I'll put a clip up anyway, and it does actually look quite nice. Just the whole, the whole actual feel of this car is very, very good. The heated seats at the moment, it's quite cold outside, so the heated seats are working wonders. It's also obviously got the heated seat option. And now the other thing it has got is this, uh, like a, the, the rear view mirror is like a complete, just a piece of glass. There's no actual uh, plastic outline to it, and it is actually looks quite snazzy. It's a fancy sort of feature on uh, the facelift cars. The pre-facelift still had the older style, older style mirror, but it's just the whole general feel of this car is. I can't, I can't knock them. Honestly, I can't knock them. And this actual car here, you know, fair play to it. All the credit to its owner. He's he's got himself a, a beautiful RS3. This is sitting slightly lower than a standard car. So this is sitting slightly lower than a standard car. I'm not too sure what brand, uh, what make of springs it's on, lowering springs it's on, but the actual lowering springs, I'm, I'm fairly, I'm, I'm, I can confidently say this, uh, the mag ride on this car has been recalibrated because it feels just as good as my previous one did on without being lowered. Because I know when you lower the mag ride cars, you have to get the suspension recalibrated and this one must have been done because it drives. It's not bouncing around all over the place and it's just, it's just there. The pre-facelift cars, I know in standard form, they were a bit darty, the front end was. These, they, this feels very much planted and it's, it's a confidence builder. You need these sort of things and these feelings just when you're driving this car. I mean, this has got 400 brake horsepower or just a touch under in standard form and 480 newton meters of torque. It pulls like a absolute bloody train. It goes like a stabbed rat. This thing is such an amazing car. And like I mentioned, you know, it's, oh, I'll put it into actually, I'll put it into a dynamic mode. So it's opened up a bit now. It's, this thing, it's, you could drive this thing, you know, throttling it around one hand on the wheel they are planted honestly these cars are so planted so well well designed and there's such a such a good such a good car i know i keep referring to this car being so good but honestly if you've never had the experience of driving one of these or being a passenger in an rs3 the 8v any of the 8v range you won't know what i'm talking about but they are so planted i know looking at reviews and all the rest of it online and you've never actually personally experienced one you know, you'll probably be thinking, oh yeah, but the M2 is a better car. The M2 is a livelier car as previously mentioned. And uh, if you don't know what you're doing with one, you will end up in a ditch. Purely because of how, how the back end, because they're rear wheel drive. So obviously you don't get none of the, the, comp, the actual confidence in one of them because they are very twitchy. What an amazing car. I, 
I might even buy myself another RS3. These things are so, so good. And tuning potential on these, as previously mentioned, is far better than the pre-facelift cars. A stage one pre-facelift, oh sorry, a stage two pre-facelift car will make at the most, with an intercooler and all the other hardware, 450 horsepower. A stage two facelift car, on the other hand, will see over 500 brake horsepower. And it makes all the difference. Honestly, it makes all the difference. My previous pre-facelift had 450 horsepower stage two. And it was a it was a fast, fast car. It's just a shame I couldn't actually, we didn't actually start this YouTube channel whilst I still had that car because it was an epic, it was a mega car. But it, you know, it is what it is. And I'll, I'll actually put a photo up of it here and you'll, you'll know what I mean. It was such a such an awesome looking car. And, but with these, in standard form, in standard form, these got 30 brake horse, 35 odd brake horsepower more than a pre-facelift. But it is a noticeable 35 brake horsepower. The pre-facelift in standard form don't feel overly, what, put it this way, once you've driven a facelift, an OEM car, standard car, and then you jump into a pre-facelift standard car, you could tell the difference. Massively, you could tell the difference. They are, they are completely different. That 35 horsepower makes such a big difference. And like as, as mentioned, these, these Audis are just an epic car, such an epic car. <laughs> they, these cars just put a grin on your face every time you drive them. And I'm not even opening this car up to its full potential, the, but it's still, I think you don't even have to. With the amount of power and with the way it puts it down, I think, you know, you, the way I've just been driving it here is more than enough. It's more than capable, more than enough uh, around the streets. When you take them on track, then it's a different story. But as they are like this, they're perfectly fine. They're, there's more than am, ample amounts of power for street driving. Like I said, the key, I mean, there's another key word for this one is, it, it's an amazing car. This car is so amazing. And like I said, I've got a soft spot. I've, I've come from a Japanese performance car background. I've had a fair few Germans, don't get me wrong, the M-Power cars and a few of the you know, 911 turbos and stuff. And I've driven plenty of other cars. But the Audi RS3, I've always had a soft spot for them ever since they first come out, especially the saloon. When they first come out, it was like, wow. And you looked at them and it was like, this is a practical family saloon packing that sort of power. Who wouldn't want one of these things? Who wouldn't? They are, they are such a such an awesome car. And you know, and having driven one now, I must I must say it's lived lived up to that expectation. Like I said, the one that I my own previous one was a pre-facelift stage two car. So it's not really comparable to a, a facelift standard car, but I've driven a standard RS3 pre-facelift and these feel a lot better to drive. Honestly, these feel a lot better to drive. And just the whole package that this car's got with the way it looks, the Nardo grey paintwork is, I don't believe it was an option on uh, IFD RS3s. It was a base color, but it was a very, very popular color because a lot of the RS3 that you see about are Nardo grey, Nardo grey. Everybody that I know was looking for an RS3 was after a Nardo grey. And I must admit, the way this car sits with it being lowered, it sits perfect. And it's on the Audi Sport wheels. They're an optional extra, I believe. They're 19-inch wheels, so they fill the arches a bit better than the uh, 18s, the, uh, the rotors, I believe they're called. Don't get me wrong, they still look fantastic. They look great. But these wheels on this car, with the way it sits, is perfect. Seriously perfect. And I do believe the actual owner's thinking about getting a um, the Maxton uh, lip kit for it as well, or he has already got it and he's getting looking to get it fitted. So when it's fitted, I'll see if I could get a snap of it, a little quick little video of it just to walk around and I'll show you. These things look absolutely amazing when they've had that done to them. So all the credit to its owner for, you know, letting me drive this car, video this car for you guys to see, you know, enough respect to him. And, uh, you know, I appreciate it. It's, a, it's, it's an absolutely stunning car. It's a great car. <laughs> I 
amazing. Keyword, amazing. And it's just got the blipping on downshift and it crackles and it's, it's, such, it's, it's a very good noise it makes. Very, very good. Yeah, so if, so if you're in the market for a um, performance Audi or a performance car with four wheel drive and you want the creature comfort, the power, you, you basically want a nice place to be in when you're driving it or you're, you're taking your family out in it. The RS3 Saloon is, is got to be one of the options to be considered. They're such, an, such, a, such a good car. Honestly, they are such a good car. It's a practical saloon car. I know they haven't got as much space in the back as a um, hatchback, sportback variant, but if you want something a little bit different, then the RS3 Saloon is, you know, it's, it's a very, very, very good, good car. The, I know the other, the RS4s, I've driven one and I wasn't overly impressed. I think it was just because it was an NA. They don't feel as lively as the RS3. The turbocharger on these kicks in and pulls you back and it's, it's gone. Whereas they've got a different sort of power output on the uh, NA cars. Yeah, so it depends on what sort of thing you're after. But for me, it's got to be a turbocharged car. And the RS3 definitely ticks all their boxes. The only other thing I can suggest on top of one of these is an RS6 if you some, want something a little bit bigger. But they're a completely different sort of car. They're, they're an amazing car, awesome car. I've had the uh, pleasure of actually being a passenger in one, never driven one. But, you know, I had a few runs with uh, an RS6 when I had my uh, Stage 2 RS3. Yeah, and they're quick. They're quick. But I think they, even they were quite surprised at, you know, how quick the RS3 was. So... I'm going to conclude the video here. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And, uh, you know, all the credit to its uh, owner for giving me the opportunity to do this. And, uh, you know, all fair play to him. Thank you very much for that. Um, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Performance Lifestyles. We're on Instagram as well, performance underscore lifestyles. And Facebook again, same name, Performance Lifestyles, obviously. Um, so yeah, check us out on there. We'll update on there more than YouTube as to when we're going to be dropping something new. So please do keep a lookout for that. We've already got a few videos uploaded on our YouTube channel. So please do feel free to check them out. Uh, yeah, and we've got plenty of other content to come. So I, I hope you enjoyed the video, like I said. And uh, so thank you very much for watching, people. And hopefully we'll catch you on the next one.